hope that you've enjoyed the day. I know that uh, we've heard a lot of really great addresses throughout the day, wonderful talks that speak about the theme of pioneers. Now, I've been very fortunate through my experience first here at Queen's University and then going out into the world to have had the opportunity to meet with a lot of wonderful people, to have a lot of really great experiences, and to work with people in Canada, in the United States, and in different parts of the world on issues that I care about. But all of this would have only been possible, so all of this would not have been possible unless I had had the opportunity to have one particular person in my life share with me a message that I've carried with me ever since. I grew up in Scarborough, the east end of Toronto, and when I was in high school, in grade 11, I had a basketball coach. His name was Renee Jansen. And Mr. Jansen shared with us, the members of the team, and th this message he also ended up sharing to the rest of the school in one of our yearbooks. His message was very simple, and it is an expression, a phrase, a thought, a philosophy that has stuck with me throughout the rest of my life. And it is this. You leave a legacy wherever you go. What will that legacy be? And when he said that to me, when he said that to the rest of the members of the team, he wasn't talking about going out into the world and attempting to be great, you know, taking up some sort of, of, of vocation and going out there and trying to be some big, really important person. What he was talking about was, what are you doing in your day-to-day -day life? When you meet someone, when you're working with someone, when you're out in, in public with other people, what is it that you're doing in your day-to-day -day life that is leaving a positive message behind, a positive legacy in your day-to-day -day with those different people that you are meeting? And it is in that way that we, as people who are just ordinary folks, can go about living our lives to the best of our ability from day to day. And it is in that way that we leave behind a positive legacy. There are myriad examples of people who have done this, just tried to live as best as they could in their day to day, and then have ended up leaving behind an extraordinary legacy. But in order to illustrate this point, I'm not gonna just randomly pick some really important figure from history that we've all come to study in our history books or seen on television or whatnot. I'm going to use a very local example, an example local to Kingston, an example local to Queen's University. I'm going to introduce you to the story of a man named Robert Sutherland. Mr. Sutherland was the 60th student in the history of Queen's University. He entered this school in 1849, at a time when slavery was still prevalent in the southern states of the United States of America. When he came to Kingston, no one is really quite sure what his background was. He somehow had some kind of connection that allowed him, as a, young, as a young man, a young black man, to be able to immigrate from the island of Jamaica to Kingston, Ontario. And once he arrived here, he had a spectacular career here at Queen's University. He ended up graduating in 1852, but before that time, he won a number of academic prizes, including one for general merit in Latin, which was voted upon by his peers. He was the treasurer of the Dialectic Society, the forerunner of today's Queen's Debating Union, and the organization that founded the Alma Mater Society of Queen's University, Canada's oldest student government. And upon graduation from mathematics and classics, he then moved on and went to Toronto, where he studied to become a lawyer. It's an incredible story. Just think about that for just a moment in just trying to live his life well from day to day in an, in an environment where he would be the only black person there in an environment that would not necessarily have been welcoming and accommodating to him. He managed to hack out a space for himself and to find acceptance with his peers and with his professors. So then he moved on to Toronto, became a lawyer, moved to Berlin for a time, Berlin, Ontario, which is now known as Kitchener. And after being there for a short period, he then moved on to a place called Walkerton, Ontario, in Bruce County. Now, why would Robert Sutherland move all the way to Bruce County, of all places? Well, in those days, of course, there was this thing that had happened into, into, that, uh, into that period, uh, something that you might be familiar with in history, which is called the Underground Railroad. 
And at the time of the Underground Railroad, of course, there were fugitive slaves from the United States making their way north, following the North Star, crossing over into what was then called Upper Canada, now known as the province of Ontario. And upon arrival in Upper Canada, of course, they needed the opportunity to try and hack out a life for themselves and to find themselves a place where they could survive. Well, Robert Sutherland moved to Walkerton because Bruce County was one of the places where these fugitive slaves, now free men, living in the province of Ontario, what was then called Upper Canada. That's where they were trying to settle. And Robert Sutherland was a lawyer who dealt with land title. So he was helping these slaves to find a new life and to establish themselves in this country that would become Canada. And he practiced there for quite some time, became involved in the local politics of the place, served for a time as the Reeve, was involved in colonial politics, traveled back and forth from Walkerton to Toronto on a regular basis to be involved in government, hung out with the most powerful people in Upper Canada. It's an extraordinary story, an, a story that is almost unfathomable when we think about what was happening in the States, in the South, where black people were not even considered full human beings. And yet here was this man practicing law in Upper Canada and helping other people to establish themselves just on a day-to-day, -day, going over the paperwork, doing the legwork necessary to help people acquire title for land. Now, after one of these trips to Toronto, he fell ill. He contracted pneumonia. And of course, we know in those days, pneumonia was a deadly disease. So in his illness, it became very clear that this was what was going to end up taking his life. And this is where the story becomes interesting in a different way. Because after being this student who had come through Queen's College and graduated, the first known black person in Canada to graduate from a Canadian university, and then after becoming the first black lawyer in Canada, at this time laying on his deathbed a couple of weeks before he would finally succumb to the illness, and die a bachelor, he received a visit from a very important person, a person who was revered in the history of Queen's University at Kingston. And this man came to visit him, was the newly appointed principal of the university, George Monroe Grant. And Principal Grant came to see him to make a very important request. At that time in history, Queen's University had been cut off from its federal funding at this time in its history, it had just gone through a situation where a significant portion, the majority of its endowment, had been lost in a bank failure. And the university was on the verge of collapse. It was on the verge of merger and takeover by the University of Toronto. And Principal Grant came to him and said, we don't know exactly what he said, of course, but he did go to, he did go to him and say, we are in trouble, can you help us? And help is exactly what Robert Sutherland did. When he passed away, his will had been updated after his visit from Principal Grant. And his entire estate, an amount that was roughly $12,000, was given to the university, given to Queens College in its entirety. Think about this for a moment. He died in 1878. He donated $12,000. That's a significant sum in today's dollars, but not a huge sum. In those days, $12,000 was equivalent to an entire year of operations for Queens College. This donation saved the university from financial ruin. And we would not be standing here, or sorry, I would not be standing here, you would not be sitting here, in this beautiful hall, if it wasn't for that donation. He became the savior of this university, Queen's first major benefactor. And all just from living a life the best that he could, he could from day to day. How did we come to know of his legacy? Well, it wasn't because somebody slapped their name on a big building somewhere in the center of campus like they did for George Monroe Grant. It's not because we named 
you know, professorships after him. It's not because we named a street on campus after him or a field or any such thing. In fact, after the university received the donation and placed a tombstone on Sutherland's grave in Mount Pleasant Cemetery in Toronto, he very quickly kind of faded into the background. No, it wasn't until the late 80s and early 90s when there were a group of students agitating on this campus for better treatment of people from all different racial and ethnic backgrounds that the story of Robert Sutherland was rediscovered, that it was unearthed, dragged out of the archives, breathed new life into, and spread amongst the student population. It became a rallying cry for the anti-racist activists on this campus. And when I came to Queens in in the year 1993, I joined that anti-racism movement and became aware of Sutherland's legacy. And we spoke about it and talked to students about it and listened to people express their dismay that after over a century, Queens had not recognized Robert Sutherland's contributions in any significant way. So when I became the first black person to serve a term as the president of the Alma Mater Society of Queens University, the 138th president in the history of that organization. I made it my personal goal to make sure that the university would never again forget the legacy of Robert Sutherland. And so I struck a student task force, which passed a series of recommendations, which we then presented to the university community. And those recommendations were accepted. We created a visitorship we created an award for excellence in debating. We created uh, a room, most importantly, the Robert Sutherland Room in the University Center. And I continue to talk, to talk about these things because it was his ordinary life, living as well as he could, left this extraordinary legacy for all, for all of us to learn from. And through learning about his legacy, he inspired me to continue to push for what I believed in on this campus. And in me doing that, over a decade later, I ended up inspiring other students, other students who were here on this campus in the mid-aughts. <laughs> and their efforts to revive the issue and to finish the job that we started to ensure that Robert Sutherland could never pass again into oblivion was rewarded when the policy studies building on Queen's University campus in October 2009 was rededicated as Robert Sutherland Hall. Why do I tell you this story? What is it that we can learn from this story? Well, first of all, Robert Sutherland did not set out to be a pioneer. He did not set out to be a trailblazer. He did not set out to be someone that others would look up to over 100 years after his passing. All he did was take advantage of those very few opportunities that were given to him, make the very best of it, and in the process of living an ordinary life as well as possible from day to day, he left an extraordinary legacy. I picked up that legacy. I learned from him. I was inspired by him. And in the process of just taking advantage of the opportunities as they were presented to me and working hard day by day, to do the things that I felt were right. Not only was I able to work with my fellow students to have something done to honor his memory, our work in turn inspired another generation of students to carry that work forward and to honor him in an even better way. So what I am hoping is that all of you here, whether you're a student at Queen's University, whether you are a community member here in Kingston, and whether, if you're watching at home, you're living somewhere else, just to remember that Robert Sutherland didn't set out to be the first black university graduate in Canada. He didn't set out to be the first black lawyer in British North America. He didn't set out to be this university's first major benefactor. He didn't set out to be the savior of Queen's College. But in the process of living his ordinary life as well as he could from day to day. The extraordinary legacy that he left is an example for all of us to honor and to respect. So this message I leave with you, if you can live your own life 
with the sort of empathy and passion that you feel about whatever it is that really motivates you to do whatever you think is important in your life and in your world. By living that way, that extraordinary way in ordinary ways, day to day, the legacy that you leave behind can be powerful. And maybe a century from now, someone could be on a stage just like I am, making a speech about you. You leave a legacy wherever you go. What will that legacy be? Thank you.